Since the beginning of time, civilizations have asked the questions. What is the human soul? How do we know it exists? Do we control our reality? Or are we actually living within a dream? What truly happens when we pass away? Join two of the world's leading experts in higher consciousness, and discover the truth about the soul, and the path to enlightenment. This is, The Living Soul. Welcome to The Living Soul. I'm your host, Kathy Gibson, and today we're going to talk about the afterlife. The concept that an essential part of a person's soul or stream of consciousness actually survives the physical death of the body. And depending on where your consciousness is at the time of death, will determine on where you're going to be, what plane of existence you're going to go to the amount of knowledge that you know before you die about the spiritual world, the relationships that you may have established with certain deities will determine whether you're going to a higher or lower world when you pass earth. And I believe that your consciousness as far as the sonin and the evolution of consciousness of the person will determine where that person goes. Now many believe that uh, a soul will just die and go to either a higher or lower world. Many of the faiths, such as Christianity, believe that you're going to go to heaven or hell when you pass this plane. Others believe that based upon how you lived your life and the deeds that you did or sown when you were here will determine which world you'll go to. And later on in our show, we're going to show you a video that's going to talk about what happens to the soul once the physical body dies as far as the first hour, first minute. And it will go into a little bit of detail about the actual mechanics of how that works. But for now, I, I, I want to talk about uh, what the afterlife is and how I view it. Um, many people don't realize, and you can believe it or not, we are all born with what's called an immortality gene. Now this gene is probably 99.99999% uh, recessive and repressed in most human beings, but there are a certain number of people who are born as immortals and some who are born as partial immortals. And depending on uh, what a person does in their life as a, a normal human, based upon the evolution of your consciousness, will determine where you're going to go in your physical plane. Can your consciousness reach a state where you would be considered an immortal or at least a partial immortal? Many people on the spiritual path spend years developing their consciousness, trying to become uh, such a person. They spend a lot of time on the body of light and having a place or a vessel for their consciousness to go once they pass the physical plane of death. And with this vehicle, um, they use their consciousness to get them into what we believe as higher worlds. And like I said before, depending on your relationship with certain deities, it will determine which world your consciousness can go into. So this show is going to be a little bit more about what takes place after you pass the plane, after your physical body dies. And we're going to talk a little bit more together later on about what our beliefs are as far as what happens in the afterlife. So thank you so much for joining us and I hope you enjoy the show. This is a show about what happens to the soul during the process of death, the release from the physical body into another world. The question of what is death is not actually the easiest question to answer. There's a whole science called forensic medicine that looks into the question of death when do you pronounce a person dead? What happens to the body after death? Then it's actually uh, the subject of many television shows, movies, drama series, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. For centuries, we had as scientists a very difficult time telling when a person was actually dead. 
there used to be something called the graveyard shift uh, that took its name from sort of a morbid occurrence that happened when a person died. It used to be that scientists just thought that when your breathing slowed down and when your heartbeat wasn't really perceptible, you were dead. Well, quite often, unfortunately, they weren't accurate. So they would bury people who weren't really dead. And in many cemeteries, they built into the casket itself a lever or a pulley system that allowed the person to signal if they had actually awakened from what they were thought to be dead. And when they did that, sometimes they did that in the middle of the night in graveyard, grave shift workers were people that looked for these signs of people that had actually passed, but weren't really dead. And it shows some of the difficulty science has had with the whole concept of has a person died? Now, I'm a scientist, but I'm also a psychic. And I learned this, oh, probably within the last 20 years of my life. I'm almost 60 now. And one of the first things I learned is that the body and consciousness don't necessarily travel the same path when a person leaves this world. I had a friend who was an astrologer past, and I saw a dream where the friend was in there and he was talking with me. We were having apple tea and he told me to go get the newspaper for him. And I did. And in the newspaper, I saw his obituary and he smiled and disappeared in the dream and said to me, I wanted you to know. Well, I hadn't talked to the friend in a couple of years. We hadn't really kept in close touch. And so I got a newspaper, I looked it up, and sure enough, he had passed two years before. And so in the dream, it was his way of telling me that he had gone on into another dimension. I had a client that I was very close to, an older uh, lady, a black lady. I'll call her uh, Miss Davis. Well, Miss Davis came to me in a dream and she was walking in some very uncomfortable high heels and she sat down and I saw her sitting on a bench and I asked her, where are you going? She said, well, I'm just trying to find heaven. And I said, why, Miss Davis? She said, um, well, I don't think I'm alive anymore. And I sat there and held her hand and talked with her. And sure enough, I found that she had passed. Well, when I got up, I went to the internet and looked it up and sure enough, she had passed a few months before this dream. It tells me that there's something that continues of each of us in another dimension of reality that we can pierce the membrane or the veil of consciousness if we know what to look for. Death is the greatest mystery that mankind will ever face. It is shrouded in superstition, rumor, and speculation. Every day, over 150,000 people die on this planet. But what happens to the soul, when the body dies? There are 358,000 births every day, but some people live much longer lifespans than others. In the first minute, the heartbeat weakens and stops, and breathing weakens and stops altogether. Brain activity may still be present, and consciousness begins to separate from the body. The first hour, is the most critical time, during the transition process. Some humans will see a bright light, leading into a higher world. Some will see a dark tunnel, leading to a lower astral world. Some will see the world as it was, while they were still in the body, and will witness no transitional tunnel. If the body does not receive proper sacraments, prayers and protection, the soul may be pulled into the lower worlds. Funerals are designed to perform this function. There are prayers that exist, to elevate and protect the energy of the soul. The divine energy that emanates from these prayers fills the soul with light, and allows it to rise into the higher worlds of the afterlife. In many cultures, 
People believe that the lower worlds are heavily influenced by negative emotion, fear, anxiety, doubt, and worry. These souls have separated themselves from the light of the higher worlds and the Creator. Research shows that half the people that experience a near-death experience, will remember life in the lower worlds. Many mystics and psychics believe, that once a soul enters into a higher world, it will receive love, medical care, food, water, and rest from the elevated souls that live there. Many humans leave behind abandoned homes, cars, and monetary debts. These energies tend to weigh on a soul, and prevent it from moving forward. There are higher beings, that like to help humans in the process of eliminating these attachments. In many cultures, offerings of money, food, and clothing, are designed to support our ancestors, and relieve these debts and attachments. 75% of the world believes that we spend a major part of our afterlife planning the next life. This is called, reincarnation. The interval between lives that has been documented is 5 days, to 62 years. The more violent the form of death in the past life, the more quickly the individual returns. The higher worlds exist in an altogether different reality than the lower worlds, and these planes are not readily accessible to humans. The video you just saw talked a lot about what happens to the soul once the physical body dies. It talked about the, the moment it happens and hours afterwards. But what if you were a soul that passed away and you went to a lower world and you came to a place that's very cold, dark, dense. There's a lot of people who are just wandering the streets, don't have any food, clothes, and it's not a great place to be. And for those ancestors of ours, it is good to send them things that they need. Uh, we're talking about sending them uh, clothes, sending them uh, spiritual money, sending them the essence of food. Uh, in fact, one of our previous shows we talked about when we had placed some food uh, for our ancestors and how the bell rung. Well, there's great need for our ancestors to receive things from their ancestors here in the physical plane. We shouldn't take this for granted because one day we're going to be part of those ancestors. We will pass this earth and we will be hopefully not in the lower world. But if we do end up there, we would hope that someone on this side would take care of us as well. So it's very important to understand the rules of the spiritual world, our responsibility to our ancestors who end up there, and what we can do to help ourselves to prepare uh, for when we depart this world. It's important to send yourself things and have things waiting for you so that you don't end up cold and hungry and wanting things. There's a whole lot going on once we pass this plane. Most people don't talk about it, and it's not something that's readily known. And hopefully, after this show, you will learn a lot more about what you can do for yourself and your ancestors as we continue with the afterlife. There's a chemical called DMT that is a naturally occurring substance in the body that allows humans to pierce the veil consciously while they're still alive and awake between worlds. About 75 milligrams of this chemical is enough to open a window between your mind and the world beyond this world. The question of where do we go when the soul leaves the body may be answered in part because by the use of this chemical. Many scientists all over the world use chemicals such as this to study the consciousness and the movement of consciousness between worlds. Personally, I have seen between worlds, maybe because my system has more natural DMT than the average person, but I've seen the other side. I've seen more funerals than I would like to count when I was a kid. My grandmother, unfortunately, liked to socialize by going to funerals. And we would go to two, three funerals a week, every week. And she liked to sit right up front, 
very close to the person. Well, that made me have nightmares and I'd go home and cover up my head. But I also, from time to time, but I think because of this fear, I would see the people lying in the casket. And at the same time, I would see that that person standing in a corner or standing above their own bodies, looking down. And I would look at them, they would look at me. And then I would see that there was something that survived of the body. Even after the body died, there was some aspect of consciousness that followed the body around. I later learned that you called that person a ghost. And I told my pastor, my pastor said, I was seeing demons, don't do that anymore. That obviously didn't stop it. But it was something that I continued to be able to do, and I found that it actually runs in my family. So I firmly believe that something continues, even with or without the use of DMT and other substances that uh, we'll talk about a little bit more when we come back. You know, we spend a lot of time talking to uh, people who follow us and people who have known us for a long time about consciousness, about elevating consciousness. Why is it so important? as far as this subject is concerned about elevating consciousness? Well, let's start with the basic premise. Uh, in this show, we give our opinion a lot, and I believe that we're entitled to our opinion. Yes, Everybody's entitled to your opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think too often we let scientists and religious people do our thinking for us. Mm -hmm. We're going to start with the opinion and the premise that there is an afterlife that something of the body, something of consciousness survives when we leave this world. We're not going to start with the skeptical opinion or just, well, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. We're going to start with the opinion that there is. Mm -hmm. And with that premise, we're going to believe that it's important to take care of your consciousness while you're in the body because that's the main thing you're going to take with you when you leave this world. Mm -hmm. That there is a part of us that continues beyond this world and goes on with us into higher worlds. Well, that is true in our opinion. So how do you take care of consciousness? How do you evolve it? Because it is our most important piece of luggage, quote unquote. It is. And I think that a lot of times people ignore the gift that we've been given, and that is to evolve our consciousness. And to do that, you really have to watch what you put into your mind. You have to watch the books that you read, the movies that you watch, the language you hang around. Like a mental diet. So yes, the, the people you hang out with. It really changes the level of your sonin when you're using different things or around certain and that, people. That's the part of the law of attraction, I believe, that actually does work. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't agree with some of the premises of it, and I did a video with another group um, in part called Beyond the Secret that looked at the other ramifications of the, the process of thinking of the law of attraction. Well, what we think about a lot, what we read, what we eat, that tends to create an impression upon the soul that follows the soul beyond this world into another dimension of reality. Mm -hmm. I think that part of the law of attraction is actually true. Mm -hmm. Well, what would happen to a person who knew of ways to uh, elevate your consciousness, chose not to use it, and then passed this world? What would their afterlife look like? Well, one rule of thumb that I believe is that your life in this world, and other people may not agree, but this is what I think. I think that your life in this world, as you're living it right now, mm -hmm. is a good approximation as to what you're going to have in your next life. Mm -hmm. If you're living a decent life, nice home, decent job, people that love you, I believe you can expect that in the next life. If you're living a horrible life in this life, you're a criminal, if you're somebody that's living in a war zone, Unfortunately, that may be a reflection of what you've got to look forward to in your next life. So you've got to really focus on elevating your consciousness, elevating your belief systems, and doing everything that you can to make your life better here so that you have something better to look forward to in the next world. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about reincarnation because there's a large number of people who believe in reincarnation. A big part of the world believes in reincarnation. That is absolutely true. That and absolutely. reincarnation is that you go through the process of the physical death and then you either come right back for some, depending on if they uh, died immediately. But for most, they take time before they come back and reincarnate and back into this world. And what is known for some is that 
your mind just pretty much is erased and you continue on and you start all over again. Uh, but for some young people, they do remember their previous life. I'll give you a great example out of our family. Mm -hmm. My mother, rest her soul, passed away about 10 years ago. And when she passed, she had a hip problem that made it difficult for her to even stand, much less walk. Mm -hmm. She also had lung problems, asthma and a few other respiratory problems that made it difficult for her to breathe. And she was hospitalized repeatedly. Well, when she passed, uh, we were very sad. But about, I would say, four years after she passed, I had a great, great niece that was born. And this great, great niece was born with hip problems, very similar to what my mom died with. Mm -hmm. She was born with asthma. Mm -hmm. And in an almost uncanny fashion, she looked exactly like baby pictures of my mother. Mm -hmm. Well, as she grew older, she talked about, I'm the mom. I'm the mommy. You should listen to me. And she would name her dolls names of people who were, had died in the family that she knew in the family. Mm -hmm. She named one of her dolls after, you know, somebody that she should not have known. It's a name that Molly, that people don't use anymore. Mm -hmm. She knew the person who lived across from her and next to her neighbor by name. Mm -hmm. and said, hey, Jean, how you doing? Don't you remember me? Well, she was three when she said that. Mm -hmm. So it, it told us, it pointed out to us that that may be my mother. Mm -hmm. Because there were other things, several other things that pointed out to us that this is not just memories of a child. This is a child remembering who it was. And to this day, she still walks with that hip problem. She still has to be treated for the asthma difficulty. And the older she gets, the more she looks exactly like my mother. Yes, she does. And she also loves you the same way that your mother loves you. I'm her uncle mentioned it. Uh, she is all over me. Thanksgiving, when she came over, she was all over me the whole day. No, little ones are tiring like that. But <laughs> knowing that that's my mother, looking at her and looking at the way she looks at me, I realized she remembers something. So in my opinion, reincarnation is that of that way, of that sort, is real. That something of my mother, we buried my mother. Mm -hmm. I went to a funeral. But now I look into this child's eyes and I see my mother again. And it is uncanny to mm -hmm. read about it but also to experience it. Mm -hmm. There's so much more to the afterlife and what we've been taught and for many people they struggle with the fear of death because it's a finality for some but it's really just another part of the journey. We spend this time on earth and we try to live the best life that we can but we need to learn more about the other worlds that are out there so maybe one day we'll do another show on this subject. It'd be a whole different show for an hour by itself, and maybe we will. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.